I know you really want some. It's really good. It's our new Moy Loco. It'll make your mouth crazy. Yes, 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 yes. Oh, hey, Dee, you gotta try this. It's a new empanada, exclusive to Empanada Loca, and with that secret recipe. A what? A secret recipe. Luis thought it would be a good promotion, and I think it's like kind of working because a lot of people already came in to buy some. It's called Muy Loco. Did Luis tell you what was in those? Um, I think it's mostly pork. Mostly. I don't know. He said he had to start going to some new butcher for some reason, and like it gave him this idea. And he told me to come out, just remind people we're still here, that we're still part of the community. And you know, we're not just an empanada shop, but Luis is a misunderstood culinary visionary. A misunderstood culinary visionary? Well, at least that's what he told me to say. Anyway, here, try it. I don't really have an appetite. Well, I do. Mmm, -hmm. that's just yummy as fuck. Hey, it's Aries from Urban Bridges. How you doing today? Hey, Aries, how are you, man? Good I'm to meet you. Good. We'll meet you. Like, yeah, yeah, you as well. And I watched the first few episodes of the series, so I'm in love with it. I can't wait to finish it. So, oh, thank kudos. you, Aries. Thank you so much. <laughs> thank you, sir. Thank you. No problem. I love how it starts out. I love like the whole setup, you know, in the dressing room, quote unquote. But tell everybody about your character that you play as a whore of Dolores Roach. For uh, yeah. So Luis Batista, he's a he's an interesting fellow. Um, he's a he's a very complicated guy. Uh, he's the owner of this uh, empanada shop and that has been in Washington Heights for more than thirty years. And his whole life has been in this neighborhood in this barrio. And um, he's in danger of being priced out and and um, and, and uh, get, having his legacy essentially being taken from him. The only thing, the only world that yeah. he knows. So he goes to some like pretty intense uh, ways to make sure that he's able to, to hang on to what's his. And he's got, a, you know, he's uh, he has a lot of love for Dolores, and Dolores is this memory of her of his past mm -hmm. and. Uh, he wants to do whatever he can to keep that. He wants to do everything he can for her to stay with him. And the measures that he takes are, are, are pretty extreme. Um, yeah. But he, you know, and he has a lot of this heart and stuff like that, but he also has a lot of darkness in him as well as that, you know, as the, the series moves further along, uh, people will, will uh, Dolores be able to, to do find it. out. I've been making empanadas all my life, Dolores. And by now, I've tried every kind of weird ass filling and flavor combination I could get away with. He's trying to create something that's special. You know? Something that's mine. But you, my Lotus, you just changed the game for me. You have led me to a pantheon. And very few of us who are called to this art I have a privilege enough to yeah, touch. No problem. And then I'm just going to have you guys both start by telling us about your characters, Nellie and Jeremiah. We can start with Kita. Well, Nellie, she's very earnest. She cares about her community, which is Washington Heights. And she's been living above the empanada shop and with her grandmother, who she takes care of. And she comes down and she works. Luis um, employs her so she can make enough money and she can be close by no matter what happens. And she's, you know, she's got a little bit of a rough exterior. You get to know her because she wants to be protective of, you know, everybody who's her fam. But um, then she opens up and she gives you all the love and she's ride or die. No doubt. Might have died. <laughs> Jeremiah, who, what, is, what is he like? Well, Jeremiah is Jeremiah. Jeremiah um, uh, is owns and runs uh, Bridge and Tunnel Meat Company. So I provide meat to many, many, many shops and groceries and restaurants in the tri borough, in the tri, well, tri state area, <laughs> Jersey, New York, and uh, oh, let's throw another name. Let's say Connecticut. And uh, it's called Bridge and Tunnel Meets. And um, I've known uh, uh, Luis's father. I've delivered to the Empire Loca for many, 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 over a decade, at least a couple of decades. Yeah. Uh, I knew Luis's father. I've known Luis since he was a little boy. So I have a history with this shop. Uh, and it holds a very special uh, place in my heart, this place, because, you know, Luis's father was my best friend. 
Uh, so I am there and I feel sort of protective of my shop. It's my little baby. <laughs> and uh, also I promised Luis's father I would look at, keep my eye on Luis. And so uh, I am a guy who's a protector and I end up protecting um, Dolores more than Luis because Luis is a little shady. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a protector. Got it. That actually leads into my next question, so I'll just um, send it to you. Tell tell our viewers really quick what the series is about. Kita? No, he meant you. Oh, me? me. Yeah, because you, oh, okay. you kind of handed on it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, I, I, I mean, how how deep do you want me to go? I mean, it's uh, it's about <laughs> it's about uh, self preservation. It's about how do you stay alive in the midst of an onslaught of life hitting you in the cruelest way every minute of your existence. You know, it's someone who, someone, Dolores, who tries, who's trying to do the good thing and just keeps getting forced into doing the bad thing or just making decisions. Like she's given, she's given option A, which is awful, and then option B, which is... <laughs> awful or worse and you have to choose between like the lesser of two evils so it's just how, how do you survive in a day to day i think that in a nutshell is kind of what each episode is about and each episode it gets worse and worse and her options mm. are, are just <laughs> you know it makes sense it makes sense hey the lord well, you got a snack actually i don't i really have to go okay, no, just a quick question i promise All right. I promise uh -huh. uh, Luis cheating on me? He got all this new business, but he ordering less and less meat. Oh, I, I don't know. I think he said he he has a new butcher. I I, I don't know. Wow. wow. Does loyalty count for nothing these days? Yeah, probably not. I, I gotta go. I just I there's somebody I have to. Yeah, no go. I mean, I got some more questions, but no go. And then New York City is always magical on screen. So being that this series is based there, tell what's the b biggest joy for you filming there? I mean, it, a big joy was uh, was just filming with um, a lot of wonderful creatives and and, and telling a story that was very uh, Latino. Um, yeah. not, not, not necessarily a story that is, you know, that is about Latino culture. It has a lot of those cultural elements in it, but having two Latino people as the principal roles yeah. in a genre of storytelling that we are not in a lot, which is terror yeah. and horror and, yeah. and like dark comedy. So that was that was a, a super great time to, to, to be working on this. Yeah, major sense. And then, Kita, <laughs> I have to ask about New York City because it's always so magical, you know, on screen. What's the biggest joy for you filming a series based there? Um, well, I was living at the time when I got this script, actually only about two or three blocks away from where it all actually happened. Wow. Story. So um, that was extremely exciting. Mm -hmm. other than yeah. just living in New York City alone, but I intimately knew what was going on. And um, I think it's the, if we're gonna go zero in on the heights, the yeah. sense of community, um, the hustle and bustle. <laughs> <All right. laughs> There's always, you know, I originally, 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 came from the Midwest before I came to the Heights. Okay. And comparatively, I always say when you come to New York, there nobody smiles at you. Everyone's so quick. Mm. Nobody takes time for you. And in this neighborhood, living there in real life and what you get from the TV show as well, there is a warmth. There is an undertone of warmth to the people there. You really care about who lives there. You know, you've got your empanada spot. You've got the guys who are playing checkers on the corner. You got all these people who you know where they're going to be at a certain time, and they kind of know where you are going to be. So you're always looking out for each other. And I think that's one of the things that I do love about this specific section of New York City. Now, other sections, you know, they all kind of vary, but mm -hmm. living in the Heights specifically. Um, you do get a family communal atmosphere. So I think that's really what I love about it, both in real life and on screen. Yeah, it definitely comes across off screen and on screen, I have to say. <laughs> no doubt. And it's then bad. you have to share what it's like working with Justina. She's such an amazing actor. So oh, what's course. that experience like? <laughs> oh, Justina was, was great. I mean, she's such a legend in, uh, in our community. And, and she's just, she's been working such a 
a long time and she has this incredible resume and she's just an absolute uh, professional and she I learned so much from working with her just like how she would be on set her etiquette and how she would ask for things that she needed and she was just mm -hmm. very very much in control and she I learned a lot from her and it was also to really share the space with her and you know in many ways kind of like be under her wing a little bit just like yeah. getting more you know working on this project that I love so much but also gaining so much experience from somebody of her, of her caliber yeah that makes a lot of sense i'm such a huge fan of hers i've been watching her forever like you said she's been on everything so yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. She's, she's, amazing. she's amazing and she's been so clean to the side of everything mm -hmm. exactly oh, gosh. Yeah, man, both tell me what is it like working with the amazing justina anyone can start the worst experience of my life <laughs> <laughs> no i love justina she's i've loved i've been a fan of hers since uh six feet under and I just think she's, uh, I think she does an incredible job in this show. Uh, she's extremely present. She's very uh, vulnerable and emotionally available. She is, um, she's all in. I mean, there's, yeah. she's all in. And the work in this show is also extremely textured and layered and complicated. Uh, in a really, really, really lovely, lovely way. Uh, and so that was it was fun. So it's fun to act with her because um, you don't have to act. Yeah. You know, you just have to exist and be, and then you're fine. Well, my experience was from a little bit of a different angle. Um, I think coming from working a lot as a fashion model and then mm -hmm. getting to do this huge show, you know, I had worked in theater too, um, but okay. that's the catalyst too, which got me to this show because I worked with Aaron um, for so long. And I think it was a huge learning curve for me to mm -hmm. be on the set. And I don't think you often get to have your first experience on a set be with a strong female lead. So as a woman to go and see somebody who was very experienced and see how she, you know, navigated the set, that was very important to me. I, I, that learning curve was, it was easier to watch her very closely and to see what she did and to see, oh, this is, you know, this is how you interact with people and this right. is how you do X, Y, Z. And it gave me confidence, you know, as a woman to be able to go in there and to really feel like I had room. I mean, I, I always had room, but it gave me the confidence to know and to feel, feel reassured that I had the room to be on the set and to take up space. And so I think for me working with her, that is what I got most from her. Mm. And of course, all the things that Kay Todd said, she's, right. she has the depth, she has the ability, she can go there, she can go light, she, you know, comedic, <laughs> dark, she can switch it on and off. But I think for me, uh, one of the biggest takeaways was learning how to conduct myself and to maneuver a set as a woman in the industry. Yeah. Yeah, I love hearing that. So that's like the experience you can't pay for. So you no, have to really just... Yeah. Especially your first I love that. Out, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> what's, what's it about that character that just makes you personally feel relatable to it? Oh, I mean, he has a lot of, uh, you know, he's, like I said, he's a very complicated guy. And I think, you know, every person uh, has a lot of complications in them. And, you know, he, I think that he deals a lot with, like, his self-worth and, you know, his, um, his, his uh, inferior, inferiority complexes yeah. his insecurity and his like loneliness and i think that all of that is something that i think a lot of you know that i can relate to and i think that i'm sure that a, a, a lot of other folks can relate to yeah. as well very human things that uh that um a very human pain that even though he does some crazy stuff you feel for him yeah i like that and then you gotta tell everybody why they need to be tuned in on july 7th to the horror of dolores road Trump oh Brown man video. <laughs> so tune in on uh, on July seventh, y'all. It's it is one wild ride. It's it uh, there are parts of it that are gonna maybe gross you out. We got a weak stomach, um, but parts you're gonna laugh, parts you're gonna be terrified at, parts that are gonna you know break your heart. Um, it's just a whole mix of things all together, and I, I don't think you know there's really nothing like this show out there right now. So I'm excited for the world to see it. Yeah, I definitely agree. 
Well, I definitely want to thank you for taking time out speaking with us, Alondra. Actually, I have some more minutes, so I'm going to ask you a few more <laughs> questions. <laughs> um, just for those that's not familiar with the series, give us a breakdown of what it's about real quick. Uh, it's about Dolores Roach. She um, she had been in jail for about 16 years for like very petty, small marijuana charges back in like the early 2000s. And 16 years has gone by and she's released from prison. And she, the world has changed a lot. Um, okay. And she goes back to... Uh, Washington Heights, the city has been very much gentrified and, you know, it has very much changed and um, it's very much changed and she has um, trying to find some kind of place that has a bed for her. You know, she that's mm -hmm. a line that she says, it's the somebody she let rest her head at night. And the only thing that is familiar to her is this empanada shop that I'm the owner of that's been there for like 30 plus years. And with that, you know, she tries to you know, work her way back into society as a massage therapist. That's a, a skill that she picked up when she was uh, in prison. And she has, uh, she ends up having her way of life and her newfound freedom threatened. And she needs to find ways to make sure that that is not threatened. And she goes to some dark measures to do so. Yeah. So you gotta find out July 7th. Yeah. Right. It's intense. And then before we wrap, I know this role is a, re a really good breakout role for you because it's such a intense role and I like your character in it. But what's your ideal role moving forward? What would be like your ideal role next? Ah, oh, man. I mean, this this is this is this was this is a tough question because this was like Luis was so yeah. very much yeah. ideal for me. I had such a ball playing him. You know, people have a ball watching him. Uh, I think that my ideal role is I mean, anything that I'm able to like bring my myself to um bring who i am into the I, I always i always go about like acting in many ways and like i guess my process for lack of a better term um uh, i have to bring myself to the part i have um bring my own experiences and i because if i don't do that i'm lying so any if i can see this and like if it or it, it it might not be me but it's just a different side of me so yeah. i mean I, I would love to to do anything like that that i can make intensely personal Okay. Yeah, we're putting it in the atmosphere for you, so it's yeah. coming. <laughs> Put it out there. It will come. No doubt. Well, again, thank you for taking time out speaking with me again, Eric from Urban Bridges. I, again, love the series. Looking forward to finishing it up and seeing what you can do next. Awesome. Thank you, Eric. Thank you for your I'm time. Sure I have the right date on Prime Video. Why should they tune in? Oh, why? Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, go first, Kitty. Let me think. Because it's good. <laughs> <laughs> Are you sure you don't want to go first? That was so. Um, that was, that was my uh, yeah, no, because it's good. It actually is really good. I hate everything, even stuff I'm in. Just because I'm in it doesn't mean I'm going to endorse. Well, you know, but um, it's really, it's actually really good. It's brilliantly written, and um, Aaron and all the writers. Uh, I'm not going to start to list them because I don't know all of them to be honest. But um, uh, it, it's actually very well written and. I'm sorry, it's well, it's well cast. The actors are good. Definitely. I think yeah, yeah. It's, it's worth watching because it reaches across all people. You know, we are so lucky to have a diverse cast. All of our leads are of color, black or brown. Mm -hmm. But the things that we're dealing with in this show are situations that anyone could find themselves yeah. in. We happen to find ourselves as black and brown people in these situations. Um, some people might think more often than others, which doesn't necessarily mean that, that it's true, but it gives you a sense of being able to see really why these people end up in these situations instead of it being like, you know, this happened, you're at a trial and then somebody ends up incarcerated. You're getting to yeah. really see and the complexities of how somebody could end up from point A to B to C. And to see it's really not just about what you think um, somebody who might do that is made up out of. And you really look inside yourself, no matter what color you are, no matter what race or creed, and you say, oh, that really is in me too. And I think that makes people think because a lot of people, um, do not dare think about the fact that they are capable of doing all of these things. A lot of people don't let themselves go there. And I think that's what's important about this show. Yeah, very important and very well stated. Thank you guys. Y'all are hyping it up. They already know it's a good <laughs> show. So y'all just confirmed it. <laughs> well, again, I want to thank you guys for taking time out speaking with me, Aries from Urban Bridges. Again, I'm a huge fan of the show and of you both. And I hope you could see success. Thank, thank you, Urban Bridges.
16 years they locked my ass up for possession with intent. Dolores Roach in the flesh. It's been like forever, mommy. You look like shit. Well, um, I have no money. We're not hiring today. No job prospects. And a bet that your boss's dad died, and so I'm pretty sure I know I look like shit. Thank you very much. I thought maybe that I could be a legit masseuse. You gonna do it here, D? Magic hands, Dolores. It's like a little spa in here. I know, right? $20 for a half hour. You're amazing. You got a hooker working here. No. Is that you? No, no, harassing no. me. Harassing. You're running an illegal business. So what am I going to see what these magic cans can really do here, huh? <laughs> what have I done? I never did this before. Maybe I got to cut them up first. Get the ghetto. And, and I'm going to take the, the balloons, the, the, all those balloons. Don't worry about a thing, the Lotus. I took care of it. I just wanted to have a normal, mm. simple life. Sweet cannibal Jesus, please no. I'm going back to prison. You got anything you want to get off your chest, Dolores? There's something wrong. You want to give me a hand? I don't want to be a serial killer! <laughs> Mommy's been busy. Did I miss your birthday? Oh. Uh, no, I was just uh, feeling festive. <laughs>